Yeah. Pooped in his big boy pants. You know that super huge Colts parlay into the playoffs thing? It actually looked okay during the the first half of the morning games. It looked like there was some semblance of a shot. The 18 steps to the yeah. playoffs with Indianapolis? Yeah, it was looking – I mean, it, it clearly did not pan out. But at least halfway through the morning, you thought, there's a, there's ch- a chance. Which situation would you rather be, the Cowboys or the Colts? Cowboys. Yeah, for Easily. Sure. Easily Cowboys. The Cowboys have a real defense and a real offensive line and an elite level wide receiver and a and a great quarterback. Okay. And a easier division. Yeah. Well, maybe not easier. But all right. The Cowboys are gonna be good again. We talked about it earlier. Tom Brady lets you down in a big way. Twelve uh, for one thirty four. Twelve total completions. Wow. If you're gonna do that, just put in Garoppolo and Did say they goodnight. not want to win that game? I don't know, man. There's I some mean, conspiracy out there. Right? So, th- <laughs> Because now they can't play the Steelers in those first two rounds. Because who knows? It's uh, possible. Bl- Blake Bortles. Get your tinfoil hats. Oh, Blake yeah. Bortles is a guy who won so many of our listeners' championships. If you properly had that Week 16 uh, fantasy championship, and if you were riding on the, the love and the coattails of that into Week 17 – he was worse than Tom Brady's 12 for 134. Yeah, he had more yards at 239, but he also had two interceptions, no touchdowns, and crap to your team. Blake Bortles is uh, improving way better than last year. He's still not ready for top defenses. Maybe by next year. But That's been the story with ready. Bortles. He's a candidate for the garbage man of the year because he took advantage of teams that didn't have good defenses. And at least he could do that. And he has weapons with Robinson and Hearns and Julius Thomas and such. All right, Derek Carr, not a good game. Aaron Rodgers keeps disappointing you. He had the yardage was there, but just, you know, not what you hope from for a guy who was in some leagues a first round pick. You know what's crazy is he finished, Aaron Rodgers had 291 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. But that pick that he threw, James Jones was. He had so much room to catch a touchdown towards the towards the you know the sideline, uh, sideline. and Aaron Rodgers threw a terrible ball in basically to the defender, and it was like he you had him in the NFL wide open, and that should have been a touchdown. You you know that's a that's an eight point swing for yeah. fantasy. He could have had a great game. And, and Carson then, Palmer, cool. oof, we don't talk about that. <laughs> Carson Palmer was bad, and he got benched. Uh, rough because we came out and we said what Arian said, which was he's going to play his guys. Now the game got out of hand early and, the, and he made the right decision. And the Carolina game was already yep. out of hand. And so he said that that factored in. This is another reason we said coming into week 17 that of all the recent years, this was like kind of a better week because only Washington was really established. But you saw this take effect in multiple games where yes, you did where, you know, later on in the game, we're not going to take the risk. Other game scores have kind of determined things. So let this be a good time to start talking to your league about a Week 16 championship. Really. I we mean, actually have a question about that coming up in the mailbag. Great. That we can talk a little bit about at length. So running backs, D'Angelo Williams got hurt. Yeah. David Johnson disappointed. Chris Ivory, David it was an Johnson. enigmatic that we'll talk about. And then Latavius Murray and Eddie Lacy. So big names. That didn't do it in week 17. Chris Ivory is the guy I want to talk about. I tweeted right before the game, hey, Bilal Powell's out. I did too. Get Chris Ivory in your lineup. And he looked great. He only On had that s- carry. Yeah, well, <laughs> he was six for 81. I mean, actually, every carry, he was pretty right, good. Right, right. I mean, his other five, he was five for 30 something. Clearly, the New York Jets saw something in, uh, in, in my favorite sleeper, Stephen Ridley. Ridley carried the ball. Six <laughs> Clearly, they it, saw something ri- that I saw. <laughs> yeah. Ivory didn't leave the bench at all in the first quarter. And in the first quarter, Stephen Ridley carried the ball six times for 15 yards, and the Jets punted four times. So this was a cold game you need for the playoffs, made for Chris made Ivory's for running Chris style. Ivory, that you have to win. And then when he came in in the second quarter, he ripped off a 55-yard run, and then... 
got five more total carries. In Something the game. had to have been going on, and we have not yet heard. Now, about Ivory it. said, "To now, he had been limited with a knee injury. He said this. He said, I was still a little shaky, but I'm a strong man. <laughs> but I'm a strong but I'm a man.' Strong man. He said, "I know how to play with pain. I was in a little pain, but I could have played a lot more." Yeah, and should have. Ugh. So it's weird because. Uh, I think you know, Todd Bowles, Bowles said... Yeah, he said game plan related. Yeah, Bowles said we wanted to give him a long time to rest. And uh, so we're not going to... Yeah, we're going to give him a whole off season. There's a tweet here from a, uh, a a beat writer who covers New York. And he said that Ivory claims he was healthy and doesn't know why he didn't get the bigger workload and he never asked. Well, and yeah, and it's interesting because he basically played third down role. With Bilal Pella. Yeah. That's right. what Ivory did. He came in and played this third down role. I don't know why they changed the script there. It was a bad game for the Jets. At least it got 81 yards. Didn't completely Somebody asked kill us, you. Somebody asked us on the show. Yeah, that's true. Somebody asked us on our Patreon mailbag show. Who are you kind of, who's your like dark horse? Who are you rooting for? A couple of us said the Jets. We were really hoping the Jets could get in there. And uh, it didn't work out. Fitzpatrick, bad game. That that's more of an NFL poop your pants than that was, well, than that a fantasy was, poop your pants. I mean, it was a little both. We talked about Winter Fitzpatrick all year. When will Winter Fitzpatrick show up? The answer was the worst possible time. <laughs> I feel. I mean, he has never been in the playoffs, right? Eleven years now. I not that I can think something of. like that. All right, tight ends. As I alluded to, Kelsey, nothing. Yeah, one for ten. Greg Terrible Olson, game. nothing. nothing. Two for 16. And Julius Thomas, two for 12. Three guys that did not help you in week 17. That being said, moving forward, Mike, I'd love to know your kind of perspective on Travis Kelsey's season. He was a big sleeper for you. He didn't have a terrible year by any stretch. He certainly didn't have an upper echelon game-changing tight end season. So how do you look at him going into 2016? You have to look at Travis Kelsey as a guy with tremendous talent. Uh but a lack of opportunity. If you look at, uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me because uh, I was not prepared for a, to uh, riff on Travis Kelsey like this, but Kelsey's yards after catch, uh, last year, he I believe he led the league for tight ends. This year, if he's not leading the league in yards after catch for a tight end, he's very, very close. He is he just, his physical skill set is tremendous, but... Uh, the offensive play calling just never targeted him. They brought in uh, the dirty cake, Jeremy Macklin, who had a great year. Uh, a part of why I liked Travis Kelsey was Macklin. I thought that Macklin could have an effect of get Kelsey more open, more involved in the game plan. It just never came out that way. So as far as next year, Kelsey's not a guy I will avoid. It's it. I didn't get burned by him to the yeah, point. He of still saying, finished as the number six tight end. You just you you have to adjust. And he was number two in terms of yards after the catch at, who's, the, at the tight end position. Who's number and number one eight right overall? Now? Number one was Reed Gronkowski. That's oh, what I Gronk. thought. Okay, yeah. So and, and so he's he's going to be a guy that you can uh, because other people will be a, a little bit sour on him. So he's a tight end. Maybe you can get in the ninth round or so, which I would be perfectly fine with right All now. All right. So the wide receivers who. Pooped in their big boy pants. Odell Beckham, uh, yeah. he definitely, uh, you know, five for fifty four is, eh, you know, it's not it's not a goose egg, but he's Odell Beckham, and you expect more from him. Uh, I think the two that were the worst. Uh, one guy, I hope you didn't start. We said to sit him. He did not look good. Was Amari Cooper? He was two for twenty. He shouldn't have even been playing. They should have shut him down two or three weeks ago and let him rest up for next year. Great player. But Brandon Cooks Weird, man. had been on fire. Weird. And he finished the game with five for 22. Was <laughs> like I don't know if he had like some negative 20-yard play to get that, <laughs> that kind of yards per catch average there. Um, and then, of course, Doug Baldwin, uh, you know, because he stunk because Russell Wilson stunk and you should have sat him. <laughs> yeah. Why in the <laughs> world is that not the headline here? <laughs> Oh, I tried so, to do it. I tried. Mike, Mike sits Russell oh. Wilson weeks ago. On on Russell Wilson's explosion. Looks like week. an idiot. I show you guys how to really sit Russell Wilson. <laughs> I look like an idiot. And I... You decide your turn to sit Russell Wilson is com- up. Completed the trifecta. So thrice we have looked a fool. Like, I grabbed, I grabbed the scalding pan 
yeah. and, and, and and burned your hand. And I had the 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 letter emblem in my hand like yep. Home Alone. Mm-hmm. And then Andy was like, "Well, let me make sure. Yeah. Let me make I sure we should do two that. hands." And then he got scorched, and then Jason like comes in, I guess, a couple days later, and we're like, "Hey, Jay, it's don't do that. It's do not hot. do that." And then I and I'm getting just I'm getting griefed on Twitter, and I'm like, "You guys talk to Jason about that." Yeah, I had nothing to do with but that. But in my defense, At Jason FFL, don't three, put that evil on me. Three, Jason FFL. three strikes and you're out. <laughs> I was just wanting to get that strike out now before the playoffs for the Cardinals. Yes, so okay. you're welcome, Cardinal fans. <laughs>